nice, very nice aspect. And what is your opinion on Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto? Many people ask this question. What? Uranus, Neptune, and... What are they? Yeah, I mean, what's your opinion? Yeah. Or in your experience, how you have seen them working? Well, you know, I started with Western astrology. So I did that for about four or five years. So Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are the most important influences. Um, the best book is a book by Stephen Arroyo, A-R-R-O-Y-O. It used to be called Astrology, Karma, and Transformation. I don't know. I think he renamed it. But if you look for Stephen Arroyo books, he's got bo uh, one book on Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. It's one of the best books in all of astrology. It's a tremendous book. So Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. Oh. It's the higher octave of Mercury. So Uranus rules independence and freedom. So if Uranus is on the ascendant, the person is very independent. They're restless. They, are, they do not follow rules and regulations and restrictions. They do things outside the norm. Okay. So astrology, so Uranus rules airplanes because that's advanced. It rules astrology, metaphysics, um, electricity. That's Uranus. Wherever Uranus is placed in the horoscope, the person is independent. So Uranus is in my money house. So I have no problem investing in something with a lot of risk, gold and silver. Like if Uranus is in the second house, your money can go way up to the top or way down to the bottom. It's very, very changeable. Okay. Oh. If a person has Venus conjunct Uranus, they have no rules and regulations in love matters they will they will do they will have partners that are strange weird different um you know they could be bisexual uh they have independence in in and if Ven if venus is with uranus neptune or pluto the person can be very artistic because those planets are you know intense influences neptune is the higher octave of venus oh but Neptune is like Ketu. Okay. Neptune is illusion, deception, confusion. If Neptune is in the marriage house, the person gets a partner that may be illusion or deception, or the partner could be mystical, or the partner could be completely spaced out and not grounded. Okay. Um, Neptune in the first house, very bad for the confidence. Neptune is like oil or gas. You can't get a hold of it. If Neptune is in the house of the mother, the fourth house, you can't get a hold of your mother. It's like she's not there. Okay. You know? Um, Pluto is great intensity. Great intensity. If Pluto is in the marriage house, then your most intense experiences of growth come from married life. Problems in marriage that cause you to grow. Pluto causes death and rebirth experiences. If Pluto's in the fourth house, you have these intense experiences with the mother that are painful and you grow, you have evolution and growth through them. And Pluto's a very spiritual planet. All those planets are more spiritual in different ways. Uranus rules intuition, the kind of people that, that just a thought comes into their mind and it's accurate, that's Uranus. The intuition that comes from Neptune is more of you feel, you feel what's going on, and that's how you, that's how the intuition comes, right? Whereas Uranus, it just pops into your brain. That's Uranus, very sudden. And Pluto is very spiritual. Pluto is very spiritual. A Pluto person wants to heal other people. Pluto. They said originally that Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. Okay. Because when Pluto was discovered, they saw all these dictators, Hitler and Mussolini and Stalin dictators and the mafia. This is all Pluto. Very intense and, and killing and murder and violence. So they figured that Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. Isabel Hickey, a very famous Western astrologer that died around 1982, 83. She said that Pluto is the higher octave of the moon. 
Oh. And I agree with that. Because a Pluto person wants to nurture. They want to heal other people. My strongest planet in my Western chart is Pluto. I have a very, very strong nature to try to heal, heal other people, fix problems like that. And it creates a lot of intensity, Pluto. Okay, so if Pluto is in the ascendant or in the tenth, you can say that they can take maybe healing as a part of their life or career. Yeah, but it's it's not medicine. You have to understand it's okay. not medicine. It's okay. the tendency to want to to fix the problem, to heal the earth, to heal the world. But it's more than that. I mean, Pluto in the tenth house means a powerful career, big career, powerful okay. career. And it might mean the person wanting to heal the world in some way, spiritually, you know. Like that. And uh, what is your idea like in for the other planets? We have the exaltation and debilitation, own sign, and also for Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. How have you? I don't. I don't have those memorized. Uh, I don't. Not not exactly the signs which it rules or exaltation, but how have you seen them performing in like earth signs or I mean, do you have any area where you said or oh, like Uranus is very good in these signs? Well, I, Uranus in Aquarius is his own sign. Okay. That would be good. Um, I, I don't know. Pluto in Scorpio could be very powerful. <laughs> okay. Neptune in Pisces, you know, like that. But um, I'll give you an interesting example of Pluto, how powerful it is. When Pluto, now this is in the tropical zodiac, not the sidereal. Okay. When Pluto entered Sagittarius, and this won't be exact, it'll be within six months or eight months. The, these planets entering a sign, they won't be exact. But around the time that Pluto went into Sagittarius. In the United States, we had the O.J. Simpson trial. This is where a man went free, even though most people said he killed his wife. So that brought into focus our justice system, because he had good lawyers, expensive lawyers, he went free. That's So for years, everybody was focusing on our justice system. That court case began around the time when Jupiter went into Sagittarius. When Pluto went into Leo, which is a sign of entertainment, movies, there was a year, I think it was 1939, we had these amazing movies, The Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, I don't know, there was a bunch of them. It's considered the greatest year of film. And it's because Pluto went into the sign of Leo. When Pluto went into Capricorn, the 2008, economic collapse that affected the world, that was Pluto and Capricorn. <clears throat> and that's in the tropical zodiac, not the sidereal. So, and I find both zodiacs work. But, um, you know, the same thing will happen. Uranus will go into Scorpio for seven years, and you'll have all kinds of things connected to sexuality or sexual illnesses, things like that. Okay, okay. But I would recommend anybody that wants to understand Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto should buy that book by Stephen Arroyo. If if a person does not know Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto going into the houses and hitting other planets, they are missing very, very intense information. Okay, so this will bring me to the next and one of the most awaited questions, I guess. What uh, what kind of books or which books would you suggest for a beginner in astrology and for advanced? I mean, depending on your experience or some writers. It's very hard to learn a 